My name is Jayesh Jadav, and in today's video, we are diving into Power Pages interview questions. Whether you are preparing for an interview or just want to enhance your knowledge, this video is packed with all the important questions you need to know. I'll cover a range of topics, from basic concepts to advanced scenarios, to help you ace your next interview. So, make sure to watch till the end and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tech content. Let's get started. Can you explain the architecture of Power Pages and how they integrate with other components of the Power Platform? Power Pages, previously known as Power Apps Portals, is part of the Microsoft Power Platform, designed for building external-facing websites that integrate seamlessly with data stored in the Dataverse. Here's a detailed look at its architecture and integration. 1. Front-end Layer Web Pages, the primary interface where users interact with the portal. Web Pages are created using templates, CSS, and JavaScript. Liquid Templates, a templating language used to dynamically render content on web pages. 2. Backend Layer Dataverse the core database that stores all the data used in Power Pages. It's the same backend used by other Power Platform components like Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI. Entities and records, entities, now tables, in Dataverse hold the data, and records are individual entries within these tables. 3. Integration Layer Power Automate for workflow automation, allowing data to move between Power Pages and other systems. Power Bay for embedding reports and dashboards into Power Pages, providing real time data visualization. Custom APIs for extending the portal's capabilities by connecting to external systems. 4. Security Layer Azure AD B2C for user authentication and management, ensuring secure access. Web Roles, for defining user roles and permissions within the portal. What is the Portal Management app in Power Pages, and what is its purpose? The Portal Management app is a model-driven app within Power Pages used for managing and configuring various aspects of a portal. Its primary purposes include 1. Content Management, creating and managing web pages, templates, and content snippets. 2. Security Management, configuring web roles, user permissions, and authentication settings. 3. Data Management, managing entity lists and forms to display and interact with Dataverse data. 4. Settings Configuration, adjusting site settings, enabling features, and customizing the portal's behavior. What are entity lists and entity forms in Power Pages, and how do you configure them? Entity lists and entity forms are used to display and interact with Dataverse data within Power Pages. Entity lists, used to display a list of records from a Dataverse table. Configuration 1. Navigate to the Portal Management app. 2. Select Entity Lists 3. Create a new entity list, specifying the table and view to be displayed. 4. Configure additional settings like search, filters, and sorting. Entity Forms, used to display and edit individual records from a Dataverse table. Configuration 1. Navigate to the Portal Management app. 2. Select Entity Forms 3. Create a new entity form, specifying the table and form to be used. 4. Configure form options, including mode, insert, edit, view, and custom JavaScript for additional functionality. Can you explain the role and configuration of web roles? In Power Pages, web roles are used to manage user permissions and access within a Power Pages portal. They determine what users can see and do based on their assigned roles. Configuration 1. Navigate to the Portal Management app. 2. Select Web Roles. 3. Create a new web role and define its name and description. 4. Assign table permissions, 
web page permissions, and other access controls to the web role. 5. Associate users or contact records with the web role to apply the permissions. How do you manage user permissions in Power Pages? User permissions in Power Pages are managed through web roles and table permissions. 1. Web roles assign users to roles that define their access levels. 2. Table permissions define permissions, create, read, update, delete on Dataverse tables for each web role. 3. Web page access Set permissions on web pages to control visibility and access based on web roles. 4. Authentication Use Azure ADB to see or other identity providers to manage user authentication and role assignment. What are Liquid Templates and how are they used in Power Pages? Liquid Templates are a flexible templating language used in Power Pages to dynamically render content. They allow for conditional logic, loops, and inclusion of dynamic data from Dataverse. Usage Include dynamic content such as user-specific information. Render lists of records, such as recent articles or user profiles. Implement conditional displays, such as showing different content to different user roles. Can you explain the concept of authentication in Power Pages? Authentication in Power Pages ensures that users can securely access the portal using various identity providers. Azure ADB2C, a common provider used for managing user identities, allowing sign-in through various social accounts, Google, Facebook, etc. or local accounts. OIDC SAML, other protocols that can be used for authentication with different identity providers. Configuration, set up authentication settings in the portal management app, defining the identity provider and configuring the necessary keys and secrets. How do you handle navigation in Power Pages? Navigation in Power Pages is handled through web links and site maps. Web links define the navigation menu items and their hierarchy. Site map configure the overall structure of the portal, including web pages and their relationships. Breadcrumbs and navigation bars use liquid templates to dynamically generate breadcrumbs and navigation bars based on the current page context. How do you integrate basic custom scripts in Power Pages? Custom scripts can be integrated into Power Pages using JavaScript. 1. Directly in web pages, embed JavaScript directly into the HTML of a web page. 2. Web templates, include JavaScript within web templates for reuse across multiple pages. 3. Entity forms, add custom scripts to entity forms to enhance functionality, such as form validation or conditional logic. How do you troubleshoot common issues when working with Power Pages? 1. Browser Developer Tools Use tools like Chrome DevTools to inspect elements, view console logs, and debug JavaScript. 2. Portal Diagnostics Use the built-in diagnostics in the Portal Management app to check for configuration issues. 3. Dataverse Logs Check the Dataverse logs for errors related to data and operations. 4. Network Monitoring Use tools like Fiddler to monitor network traffic and identify issues with API calls. How do you optimize the performance of Power Pages? 1. Data Caching Use caching strategies to reduce load times for frequently accessed data. 2. Minimize HTTP requests Combine scripts and style sheets to minimize the number of HTTP requests. 3. Optimize images. Use appropriately sized images and modern formats like WebP. 4. Lazy loading. Implement lazy loading for images and other resources to improve initial load times. 5. Database optimization. Ensure Dataverse queries are optimized and indexed appropriately. What are the steps to publish a power page? 1. Development. Build and test the portal in a development environment. 2. Configuration migration. 
use the configuration migration tool to move settings from development to production. 3. Portal Management App Use the Portal Management App to make final adjustments and configurations. 4. Site Settings Verify and update site settings as needed for production. 5. Go Live Enable the portal for public access, ensuring all configurations and security settings are correctly applied. 6. Monitoring Monitor the portal post-launch to ensure smooth operation and address any issues promptly. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Your support means a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for improvement or topics you'd like me to cover in the future, please leave a comment below. I've put a lot of hard work into creating this video, and I hope it has been valuable to you. Thanks again, and see you in the next video.